Typically, when you learn about neurotransmitters and synapses, you learn about excitatory neurotransmitters. Excitatory neurotransmitters will cause depolarization when the neurotransmitters reach the postsynaptic neuron. This could be enough to send an action potential down the postsynaptic neuron, but not all neurotransmitters behave this way. Inhibitory neurotransmitters have an opposite effect. They prevent the formation of action potentials in the postsynaptic neuron by hyperpolarizing the cell. This will make the membrane potential more negative, which will make it more difficult to reach threshold potential for sending an action potential. So these inhibitory neurotransmitters are inhibiting the ability for a neuron to fire. A neuron might receive both inhibitory and excitatory information at the same time from many different neurons. It's especially common in the brain to have multiple neurons synapse with the dendrites of one neuron. Sometimes it's hundreds or even thousands. So how does the neuron know whether to send an action potential or not? The neurotransmitters have an additive effect called summation. This means the combined effects of inhibitory and excitatory neurotransmitters may or may not be enough to reach threshold potential. Sometimes, one neuron will release enough neurotransmitter to cause an action potential. And sometimes, many neurons will release a smaller amount of neurotransmitter, and this could lead to an action potential. The result is additive. So even if there are inhibitory neurotransmitters, it's possible an action potential could be sent as long as the threshold potential is reached. The neurotransmitters we've seen so far have all been fast-acting neurotransmitters. They can get across the synapse in less than a millisecond. And as soon as they bind to a receptor, the ion-gated channels open or close in response to the neurotransmitter immediately. This creates a very quick change in the membrane potential that won't last very long. Fast-acting neurotransmitters include the excitatory glutamate neurotransmitter and the inhibitory GABA neurotransmitter. Slow-acting neurotransmitters are also called neuromodulators. It will take hundreds of milliseconds for these neuromodulators to trigger an action in the postsynaptic cell. This is in part because they use secondary messengers to affect ion movement. These neurotransmitters are often not reabsorbed or broken down, so they spend more time in the area and can affect more neurons. Slow-acting neurotransmitters will modulate the actions of fast synaptic transmissions for relatively long periods of time, like minutes or even days. Slow-acting neurotransmitters include dopamine, serotonin, and noradrenaline. Slow-acting transmitters play a major role in memory and learning. The secondary messengers can persist for days and can lead to changes in the synapse. The neural connections are strengthened when slow-acting neurotransmitters promote an increase in postsynaptic receptors or increase the rate of ion movement through a channel. The persistent strengthening of synapses based on recent patterns of activity is called long-term potentiation. The increased activity will produce stronger, long-lasting signal transmission between the two neurons. The strengthening of synapses are currently considered to be the underlying mode of learning and memory storage. Thanks for watching this episode of Teacher's Pet. Don't forget to like and subscribe and follow me on Twitter at SciencePet.